sea lion trainer here at the Houston Zoo. I've been at the Houston Zoo for about 13 years, but I've been a keeper for about 23 years. Thank you very much for joining us here at Facebook Live. And today we have a special treat. We have Jonah, our 23-year-old male California sea lion, along with Amanda, one of our other trainers here on our team. <laughs> Now, Jonah is one of the, our only animals that was actually born in the ocean. And that's a little bit of jello that he's getting. It's one of the treats that we give our sea lions, but it is sugar free. Now, Jonah was a rescue sea lion and uh, deemed unreleasable when he was just a little tiny pup by the federal government. So that's where he found a home in a zoo or aquarium. What she was just showing you there, you can see his tongue is has like a little fork in it. And then you notice his teeth. You'll notice they are brown. And that's because there's a bacteria that grow on their teeth. The theory of that is that it protects their teeth because sea lions have never been known to have cavities. Now their flippers, their front flippers, they are very important to a sea lion. Their bone structure is just like yours and eyes, but of course, it's much longer bones. And that's also one reason how they're able to move around so easily on land. A seal, of course, would have a much smaller front flipper. So they're kind of clumsy on land, but Jonah, super agile. You saw Amanda looking at his uh, whiskers earlier. Uh, you'll see them throughout the session. They were actually called vibrissae. And vibrissae, a uh, reason why they're different is because they have 10 times the nerve endings of a regular whisker. So his vibrissae, there they are, all reaching out are super sensitive. That is how they detect things in the water when the water is not super clear. They stretch them way out and they're able to detect movements, whether that's prey or maybe a predator. So one of the things we're gonna work on today is painting. Now, all of our sea lions are conditioned to paint canvases, but they're also conditioned to do what we call nose prints. And this is really special with the sea lion because the sea lion's nose is shaped like a heart. So we just put a little bit of paint on their nose. Uh, this takes a lot of little approximations and Jonah learned this years and years ago. Then we take a canvas and just make little nose prints. So you can see the heart. Some people also think they look a little bit like butterflies. Now what's really important about this behavior that a lot of people don't know is that it also conditions our animals just to novel things. So things are touching, going above them, especially the canvas, because sometimes when the vets come, they have lots of different stuff, and sometimes we're prepared for it, and sometimes they need to do something new. And all these different types of things that we do help us prepare for the unexpected, especially when they're needing something medically. So here he did another little uh, heart paint, and we're focusing on Valentine's Day, colors right now because as we all know February is Valentine's Day and so these are all going to be um, sold I believe online uh, for Jonah's paintings as well as other paintings of other animals all around the zoo. He's also been conditioned to let us wipe his nose off so he doesn't have to walk around with a red nose and she'll probably do a different color let's see we're moving on to a new color Jonah is a very patient sea lion. Um, that's the, one of the things about working with big males as they get older, and like I said, Jonah's 23, so he's getting into his older ages, starting his senior years, but they are pretty, can be very laid back and easy going. So now we're working on some purple hearts. And you guys can see too on there, his vibrisse, um, kind of feeling the canvas a little bit as she puts the, gets the nose prints on there. Also, while she's there, we can see his little ear flaps. He's got those little tiny inch and a half long ear flaps on those sides. Um, now, sea lions have those because they're what's called amphibious. They have lots of adaptations for land and water. So they have ear flaps like us, so they can hear air, hear sounds as they travel through the air. But they're modified because they also spend lots of time in the water and they need to be nice and tight when they're swimming. And so, Christy, you get a question from Melissa wanting to know what are Jonah's favorite enrichment items? Melissa.
Melissa, that's a great question. Thank you for submitting. Well, she asked, what are some of Jonah's favorite enrichment items? Well, I will say that Jonah loves his Jello, which you just saw him getting. He likes ice. And there's these toys that are called bumpers. And they're kind of like uh, the bumpers that people use uh, to protect their boats when they're docked. They're not those, they're actually made for animals, but they're similar to those in those uh, float around and he likes to pick those up and throw them around um, and knock them around a little bit. So I would say ice, jello, and the bumpers are some of his favorite toys. In the beginning you heard um, him vocalize when he greeted everybody and every vocalization with the sea lion <laughs> is very different. Males sound very different than the females because males are generally protecting a territory, whereas females are calling out to their young. And we're getting a little fancy here with this nose print. We're doing a half and half over there. So lots of different calls. And with females and pups, it's really pretty cool because each one is different so they can find their individual pup. You'll also have vocalizations that are greetings, vocalizations that are, hey, Give me some space. All sorts of stuff. He's doing a very good job today. He has a big fish right there. That's what's called a herring. And he gets more of those in the winter because they have a lot more calories. In there, you'll also see some capelin. That's kind of the base of his diet. It, gets, it fluctuates a little bit, but it's a little bit more stable throughout the year. And we'll get squid every once in a while as well. And he'll get a little bit more of that sometimes in the summertime because it's called the celery of the sea. And so they'll get lots more water out of that squid. And so we'll give a little bit more of that in the summer. Plus sea lions don't really want to eat as much in the summer. It's really hot, that's their breeding season. So we're able to give them a little bit of food without a lot of calories. One thing you'll notice too, as she gets really close up there on Jonah is his big eyes. Those are something that is a one of their best adaptations. They're nice and big. He can hold one eye one direction and hold one eye another direction. Um, they can go completely flat. Remember, sea lions are predators and prey. So all these ad adaptations have to suit being both. He's got to keep out, look out for those sharks, and he's got to be able to find dinner. Breakfast and lunch too. You can notice, we talked about those big front flippers earlier. You can see how he uses them in the water. And that's where they get most of their power. You can see how he pushed the water with those big front flippers to propel himself. Now, sea lions are pretty flexible. I will say Jonah's not super <laughs> flexible. Man, the big males are not quite as flexible. And Jonah is our dominant male. That means he's in charge of our, our colony. These, a lot of these behaviors right here, the belly present she was doing, are behaviors that help us get a good look at him every day. Jonah is covered in fur. You can kind of Amanda can rub her hand along there to show you that. And that is because he is a mammal. So all of us that are mammals have fur or hair. And a lot of people think sea lions feel more like or look like dolphins a little bit, their skin. But it's actually fur. It's super short and super dense and it's one of their ways that helps them keep warm. They live off their natural habitat. It's from Baja, Mexico, all the way up to British Columbia. So that fur helps them stay warm in those cold ocean waters. Especially when they need to go deep in the water. And sea lions can go to about 1,800 feet in depth. But that's mostly to hunt for food when it's really sparse. Or get away from a shark, maybe. And Dana wants to know, how long does it take to work on a new train? Uh, Jenna, was it? Dennis. Dennis? Mm -hmm. Okay, Dennis, great question. So he was asking, how long does it take probably to train a new behavior? Well, it really depends on the sea lion and it depends on the behavior. So something like this paintbrush, 
uh, behavior. For Jonah, it wasn't super difficult because Jonah has been conditioned for a long, long time. So probably just a few days to condition him to the paint, maybe a few more days to condition to the canvas going on on top of it, over top of his head and getting used to a little bit of pressure on there. But something like being able to take an x-ray or a sonogram voluntarily, which is something all of our sea lions do, they can take six months, a year, and with certain sea lions, even more than a year. Sea lions generally, anything that you have to lay still for, I think males do a little bit better with because they're okay just chilling out. Whereas the females learn a lot of the aerial behaviors much, much quicker. So for an example, uh, training a buoy jump, which is to go across the pool, jump out of the water, and touch a buoy that's about 10 feet out of the water. I've trained it in two weeks, and it's taken me over a year with another animal. So it really just depends. Great job, Jonah. That really looks like a lot of butterflies, I think, on that one. Yeah, good job. We got a question from Walter. So he, Walter, thank you for your question, wants to know if they shed. With sea lions, we call that molting, and yes, they do that every single year. Generally, the females go first, starting in August, and then by October, all your males start going into molting, and they get all new fur, and that expends a lot of calories. So when Jonah's finished molting, he'll go up a ton of food to compensate for getting all his new hairs. You can watch as Jonah moves up here how easily he moves on land. His back flippers and this is a type of behavior, uh, it's catch, but what we call it is a play behavior. So Amanda showcased several different types of training. We do medical behaviors. We do sessions that are just for play. Good job. We also use this behavior in one of our tours that you can, you can purchase, the guest interaction tours through the zoo's website. And it's one of the guest interactions that you can do with Jonah or Callie, tossing a ball or something like a frisbee. And I have to admit, the girls are much better at catching than Jonah, but he does a pretty good job. Thank you for asking your question. She was wondering if sea lions like affection from their keepers. Well, just like everything else, you have to condition and you have to build that relationship. So if I was just to walk up to a brand new sea lion that didn't know me, that sea lion is not going to enjoy affection from me. But as I build trust over time and work really hard at building a strong relationship, they're very social and tactile animals, which means they like to be touched that it can become extremely positive. And we're all different. We all like di to be touched you know, differently as far as whether some people like to be hugged or some people like to be just shake hands. And sea lions are the same. Some like to be touched a, a lot, rubbed all over, spend a lot of time with it. Other ones just like a little quick little pat on the shoulder or the back, so they're all different. I will say that Jonah is one of our sea lions that enjoys lots of what we call taction. And then a lot of that's part of affection that we show towards him because it's super positive for him. But they are very social, so it's it's natural for them to want to be around other sea lions and around other living creatures. Well, we're gonna give everybody a big sea lion wave goodbye. Bye, Jonah. <laughs> and we want to thank everybody for joining us here at Facebook Live. Make sure you turn in every Wednesday at 11 o'clock. You never know what different animal you're going to see. Bye-bye, everybody.